The portal giveth and the portal taketh away. Uh, we're waiting on the giveth. We're waiting on the giveth because now another badger has entered the portal. A couple more badgers have entered the portal since we last talked. And it's been a little bit because I've been waiting on the big one to drop. And the big one has dropped as AJ Store has officially entered the transfer portal after a little bit of a delay. A little bit of a delay following another announcement. We're, we're going to break it all down. All the latest Wisconsin Badgers transfer portal news here on the Scotty Six Pack podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack. I guess it's the afternoon. The Scotty Six Pack, the only daily podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbris. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbris, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Happy fake opening day. This was supposed to be a... A Milwaukee Brewers oriented episode talking some of the biggest baseball storylines headed into the season. But as as the portal rolls on and on, decided to keep that one in the chamber. And it turned out to be a good idea as we're going to have to wait one more day for baseball season uh, because. They don't have a roof. They don't have a roof in Queens, New York. Um, so we have to wait an additional day for Brewers baseball to start tomorrow. Glad I did not uh, snag tickets to opening day instead uh, heading out to Queens this weekend. Should be a good time. But before we get to baseball season, we have to talk the latest Wisconsin Badgers transfer portal news. And it all starts with. AJ store. Um, and again, if you are watching on YouTube where you can see my face, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. If you catch me looking over to the side as I talk, it's because the portal portals running hot portal is running very hot today. Uh, with one AJ store making his announcement to head to the NBA draft or head over to the transfer portal. Now, that is because store is going to navigate the waters in the in the NBA draft process, keep his eligibility, but might might return to school. I imagine that he's going to be returning to school at the end of it all. But when he first made this announcement, which Really, this was going back further than that. We talked on this show. We talked on this show after senior night, senior day, that the AJ store situation was reaching a, a level of alarm that I think most were able to put the pieces together on. He kissed the floor at the Cole Center, walking off on the last home game of this Badger season. Said that he did it for Tyler Wall. Didn't think that made a lot of sense. We talked on this show if AJ Store was going to be leaving. And the more you look at the pieces, the more that seems to be the case. A couple days ago, he makes the announcement that he's going to be entering the NBA draft, go through that process, get feedback from scouts while retaining his college eligibility. I think that he'll end up getting something of a second round grade. I think the last few days of the basketball season, he did a lot for his draft stock. Uh, you know, you have to take each game individually and he didn't look good in the NCAA tournament game. Looked quite a bit checked out. Makes you wonder if it's because he was already planning on leaving, but played really hard, played really well for most of the big 10 tournament. I think that helped his draft stock. Overall, I think this was a positive partnership for both sides, both from the Wisconsin side and from the AJ store side. And after he makes the announcement to go to the NBA draft, doesn't explicitly say that he's entering the portal. If you look at a lot of these other announcements for players who are going to explore their options in the NBA draft, they also say, you know, but I might return, you know, back to the school that I'm at or they otherwise say. And I'm also entering the transfer portal. Uh, BJ Freeman, who plays at UW-Milwaukee, played at UW-Milwaukee, 
is a really good example of this. He is Milwaukee's best player, um, was a, a Horizon League all all second team selection, which don't don't think that made a lot of sense. But he said he's going to explore the NBA draft, also putting his name in the transfer portal, and now he's getting uh, calls from everywhere, including places like Kansas. So for AJ Store to not explicitly say in his statement that he was entering the transfer portal was a little bit surprising, but didn't necessarily change the way that I was thinking about it because the statement really read like a, hey, thank you to Badger fans. Thank you to Badger Nation. I've really enjoyed my time here. Thank you for everything. Sounded like a goodbye. Well, then today, Thursday, March 28th, the news hits that AJ Store has entered the transfer portal. Maybe Wisconsin competes there to keep him. I'm putting my money on AJ Store not returning to Madison next season because Wisconsin is now going to be able to move forward with other plans that, frankly, they have to be able to make given the nature of AJ Store's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, nomadic baseball or <laughs> nomadic basketball homes over the last however many number of years. If he ends up leaving Wisconsin and going to play basketball somewhere else, it will be the seventh school in seven years that AJ Store has called home. This was always a partnership of convenience. This is just a matter of players have options now. And more so than football, this was always going to be what happened with basketball, given the dark side, dark side of, of the sport that had always existed beyond the scope of the rules and regulations of the NCAA even more so than football. And yes, this has always existed, existed in football, but basketball has always been a pay-for-play endeavor. The only reason we have NAL now is because we went to the, we went to criminal court over an FBI wiretap scandal where guys from Adidas were, were caught in the middle of it all, right? Not that Nike was, had clean hands or not that Under Armour had clean hands, but the... AAU schools or AAU teams, the shoes, they've kind of always ran the sport. And that's not that the shoes are getting involved here with AJ store, but there was always some of this percolating behind the scenes where basketball was always this pay for play endeavor, at least at the very top level. So for players to get unlimited transfers without eligibility penalty, for players to be able to secure name, image, and likeness partnerships, you know, in name only. Um, but really, it is pay for play endeavors. This was always going to be the case with basketball. And you might like that, you might not like that, but I don't think it says something particularly egregious about the state of the Wisconsin Badgers right now, not as an individual data point, at least. So I think AJ Store is off. And that leaves some other minutes to, to come in for, for the Badgers. Another player who's off to the transfer portal since we last talked is Gus Yeldon, who there is a lot more to the story than just him being a, a, another journeyman. But the journeyman case here cannot be ignored as well. He, he is also a guy who attended multiple high schools, played with multiple AAU teams, um, on the circuit leading up to college. And there were concerns about him staying with whatever program that he might end up recruiting at. It, it is not that he was always a Wisconsin slam dunk. He was never a slam dunk anywhere. Yes, he was a four-star kid. Yes, he is an Appleton, Wisconsin native. Uh, but the Badgers weren't in on him. During his entire recruitment, he was in, he was out 
until Wisconsin really had their sights set on him and zeroed in, locked him down. I think there's a lot to read into there about the in and out nature of Wisconsin's recruitment of Gus Yaldin and concerns that they may have had for something like this to be the end result of Yaldin's time in Madison. Of course, it was also marred by a rough start getting ticketed for underage drinking in Madison. I, I guess that happened at, at a home football game at Camp Randall, which you got to be, look, you got to be a little not the smartest <laughs> to get that ticket. You got to be doing something not smart or got to be a really not smart level of intoxicated uh, to, to be getting that ticket. Because I think we all know, like, it, they're college kids. And... Then you follow it up with the mysterious leave of absence announced by the program later told by Yaldin that it was due to personal family matters. Then just a few days after he said that the leave of absence was for personal family matters, the Dane County district attorney's office files charges for possession of marijuana against Yaldin. In December, he pleads not guilty to those charges. In February, an agreement is reached, and those charges are dismissed following a motion by the prosecuting attorney. But there was always just something with Gus Yaldin during his time in Madison. Think, think back to, I believe it was the game against Western Illinois. Right after he came back from that leave of absence, something like that. One of these non-conference blowout games that Wisconsin played this year where Gus Yeldon is coming in off the bench to check in for garbage time with, you know, 30 seconds to go. Heads to the scorer's table, takes a look in the crowd, presumably at his father, I believe was what the situation was. Kind of gets a head shake and ends up not checking in. Now, I can understand that beyond all of the other stuff going on. I can understand that you don't want to burn a red shirt for 30 seconds of garbage time play. Now, that comes with the caveat that there is not this, you know, four game marker like there is in football where you can play four games and not lose your red shirt in, in basketball, in volleyball, in every, everything else, every other sport. You burn that red shirt if you appear for a second of game time. There was no announcement that Yaldin was red shirting from either side, from the Wisconsin side or from the Alden side. It just turned into this thing where I guess this is what's happening. He was mysteriously absent from some home games, some home games that I covered. Never traveled with the team to away games, except for a couple. And then was absent from postseason travel to the Big Ten tournament or to the NCAA tournament in Brooklyn. The writing was on the wall here. And... Going back to him not burning the red shirt. There was always something with him not buying into putting the team first. At least that is a, a data point that you can combine with everything else. And say, I get it. I get what happened here. Given his propensity to shuffle through high schools, shuffle through AAU programs. And I understand why people can look at the preponderance of everything that has happened with Gus Yeldon as, as our, our editor over at Badger notes, Jake says the Gus bus has left the station. I can understand people looking at the preponderance of all the evidence, all the data points, and, and making making it into a, oh, kids these days, take. I don't... This is a case where I, I can be a little bit more sympathetic to it, given that my general position is, 
whatever. Players have options. These young men have have options. And I'm not going to give anyone much of a hard time for pursuing those options. I've changed jobs before because I wanted something different. And in that case, it wasn't just about the money. Some cases, it is just about the money. But athletic directors, coaches, they do the same thing. Look at Trev Alberts going from Nebraska, where he was a legend, to Texas A&M. We don't kill athletic directors for this. We don't kill coaches for this. I don't think we should be doing the same for athletes. And, and the Gus Yaldin situation is a situation of its own. He's a fan favorite. Gus Bus. Like, that's a name that rolls off the tongue, right? Four-star prospect. Big man. Out of Wisconsin. One of these personalities that really drew people in. Kind of like a Connor Asijan. But once he got to Madison, it had to get quiet real fast because of the Rocky start. And it was an unfortunate end to his time at UW. You hope that he can find a home that suits him for whatever it is he wants to do. Because I can understand people having a hard time figuring out what it is that you want. I I can really understand that. And it seems that he has had, had a hard time figuring out what it is that he wants from a basketball program, from, from a life perspective. So, so that is Gus Yeldon. And off he goes. The, the final bit I, I want to touch on here for a second is oh and here's an interesting little tidbit from AJ AJ store who is quote tweeting his uh, on on a three covering the fact that he has entered the transfer portal just with NBA with a little head rub emoji so yeah, that's fun um I I want to say that none of these transfer portal moves are serious reasons for concern off the bat for Wisconsin. AJ store is the only piece that the Badgers have lost off the roster. That is a legitimate rotation piece for Greg guard. Connor Asijan down the stretch of the season did not really get significant playing time miss you know, due to coaching decisions, right? Didn't, didn't play in the final, uh, whatever it was, three, four games of the postseason. Gus Yelda never saw playing time. You lost two. Um, you lost two walk-ons, and then you lose AJ Store. A AJ Store is the big piece here, and he's going to be gone for reasons that are, you know, beyond Greg Gard's control. If you are killing Greg Gard for the transfer portal moves here, you should take a look at what's going on at other places. Like Minnesota, Minnesota's losing a lot of guys. Minnesota lost a lot of guys last year in, in true starting pieces that it was hard for them to retain. Frankly, I think Greg Gard is doing a really good job at keeping this roster together. And it's not that he is the only one in the country keeping his roster together, but I think he's doing a really good job of it compared to other places like Indiana, compared to other places like Rutgers that are having a tough time keeping keeping all of their pieces in. And if you are wondering what might come next for the Badgers, uh, you, you should check out badgernotes.com where we have some other pieces going up on these folks transferring in and out of the program. My latest work for Badger Notes is linked in the podcast description. Uh, and we have a lot going on there, including some words on 
a Wisconsin Badgers transfer portal target that will be visiting Madison over the weekend. Before we wrap up, I do want to touch on one thing that we had anticipated on this show in recent days, which was the the transfer out of the Wisconsin women's hockey team for Jane Gervais. And yeah, we're we're sneaking women's hockey news into the transfer portal episode. Yeah, you I will be gosh darned if the transfer portal agenda will be limited to men's basketball. Fortunately, the men's team still still has uh playing time to go. They they play in the first round of the NCAA tournament this Friday. But Jane Gervais is headed to the portal. And that is another decision that is not all too surprising. The women's hockey team has now lost two players to the portal. Uh, the, the other one I, I've also written about over at Badger Notes. You can find that link in the podcast description. But Jane Gervais is definitely the more significant loss. And she split playing time over the course of the regular season for the last two years. She has played in 31 games, won 26 of them in her career. That is a solid starting goaltender with a a career save percentage of 929, of almost 930. She's going to be sought after in the portal. There, There are a lot of folks in the transfer portal, a lot of goaltenders in the transfer portal for women's hockey who have one year of eligibility remaining. And Jane Gervais joins that group because look, it's kind of like quarterbacks. When you, when you think about all the quarterbacks that end up hopping in the portal on the football side, only one of them gets to start. Only one of them gets to start. And if you want playing time, you you gotta you gotta go find it wherever you can. Jay Gervais seems to be seeking that playing time after getting beat out for the postseason starting goaltender position over the course of the last two seasons by Kami Cronish and then Ava McNaughton, respectively. So she she will be sought after. I think she is of the top three goaltenders in the portal currently available. Uh, the others being Kaylee Osborne transferring from St. Lawrence, who has a year of eligibility remaining. And then Haley McLeod, uh, who, who is transferring from Duluth, kind of similarly to Jane Gervais, kind of getting beaten out down the stretch of the season with see, seeing the writing on the wall of a, a true freshman goalie who has some legitimate playing chops who will probably be overtaking her these next, this next season And McLeod has two years of eligibility remaining as well. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm working on a piece for Badger notes talking about Wisconsin's options at, at goalie, because I think they do need to add a goaltender in the portal. Um, their other option being Chloe Baker, who, who is fine, but I don't believe not based on anything other than just how much playing time she has gotten over the course of the last two seasons. I I do not believe she is viewed as a legitimate option behind Ava McNaughton for the second string goaltender role. So Jane Gervais is a big loss for, for Wisconsin. I think she would have been happily welcomed back. I also think that that program is completely understanding of her decision to try to find playing time elsewhere. And we'll continue talking about it. We'll continue talking about all things transfer portal here. The the spring window for, for the transfer portal opens. If I go to my, my nifty little transfer window printout here that I have, the football spring window opens on April 16th. So there, there's going to be an opportunity for players to enter the transfer portal very soon. And Wisconsin doing a, a I guess, fortuitous job of moving its spring practice window to really involve most of April as 
their dates for spring practice because the transfer window that players have to enter the portal by ends on April 30th. So there, there's going to be probably a flurry of activity toward the end of spring practices for Wisconsin football as those wrap up and then players choose to enter the portal near the end of it. So, so stay tuned here. Uh, we'll, we'll try to cover some of that. If there are big football moves that end up going into the portal as well. Um, but there, there'll be people with their, their eyes more focused on the football team than I am this time of year over writing at batch notes for those transfer portal movements as well. But that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow, we'll be back with some storylines heading into the Milwaukee Brewers season because it's opening day. Opening day, part two tomorrow as we head to opening weekend. Uh, and until then, we will talk to you all very, very soon. Thanks for listening to the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. While you're there, smash the subscribe button, hit that like button, and follow me, your host, Kedrick Stumbers, at Kedrick Stumbers on the website, formerly known as Twitter. Until we talk, until we talk to you all again very soon on Wisconsin.